Hello. What I want to talk about in this video is not evidence to, for or against the spherical Earth model or the flat Earth model. I want to talk about this in a broader terms as a phenomenon because for me, it's got to the point where there's no point discussing evidence anymore, not with real flat earth believers. I mean, I make videos about the evidence against flat earth and for the spherical model, partly because it's kind of fun, it's interesting. And for people who are encountering this strange thing that's going on, and might be considering that there's something to it. Um, but for the people who are actually are flat earth believers, it's not really about discussing evidence and facts. I've, I've realized that. I remember a few months ago, I came across a video concerning um, flights in the Southern Hemisphere. And I thought, well, if I can find a flight in the Southern Hemisphere that's impossible on a flat earth, Surely that will convince them. And I did. I, as other people have found this, Qantas do a flight from Sydney to Santiago and it takes 12 hours, 40 minutes. I did the calculations and showed that it's impossible on a flat earth. And I really thought, well, what can they say against this? It's on the website for Qantas that they do this flight. Well, I was pretty naive. I couldn't believe what they actually said in response. They said that the person I presented this to said that the flight didn't actually exist and that Qantas put it on their website in order to maintain the illusion that the Earth is a sphere. I think it was a, a pivotal moment for me in dealing with this because I realised that you were dealing with insanity. I mean, that is madness. If you actually believe that Qantas pretend on their website to have a, wet, to have a flight that doesn't exist, you're kind of really, you're, you're in a different league where it's not about evidence, it's not about facts. I mean, the evidence is just, it, the idea that the earth is flat is absurd. There's no, there's not, there's, it's beyond really discussing it. There is only really one feasible solution to what we know, which is that the earth is a sphere. For, for that situation to be true, for that flight, for that situation with that flight from Sydney to Santiago, I mean, if the flight actually does f exist, then either planes can fly at about three times the speed we're told they fly at, or the distance between Sydney, Sydney and Santiago is much shorter than we're told it is, or the flight doesn't exist. Now, um, any one of those scenarios involves a lot of people knowing that, that there's something wrong. I mean, the geography of a flat Earth would be radically different from the geography of a spherical Earth. There would have to be a lot of people who knew that the Earth was flat in order to just simply do their job. I can't understand, I can't believe that a pilot couldn't know that the Earth was flat if it was. Astronomers and cosmologists would have to know it. Geographers would have to know it. Cartographers. All kinds of people would have to know just to be able to do their job. And I wonder what what the flat earthers imagine happens at some point in the early point in your career. Say you're a, you're a pilot or a navigator or an astronomer. You know, you get a tap on the shoulder one day and there's a kind of gang of goons there and they, they say, like, come with us and they take you into a room at the back of the building where you work, where you've never been in before. And there's a guy in there with black sunglasses and uh, a black tie and he's in a black suit. And he says, well, okay, right, take a seat down there, son, take a seat. And he says, okay, I've got something to tell you, son. I've got something to tell you. You think the Earth's a sphere, it's not, it's flat, okay? It's flat. Of course, the guy would be saying, what are you talking about? How can the Earth be flat? Well, it is flat, it's flat. Just, 
Just accept it, move on, don't mention it to anybody. You can say, well, what would, what would happen if I do mention it to someone? Uh, well, I, I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't do that. I just wouldn't do it. Why not? Two words, Princess Diana. Okay, enough said. That's all I've got to say. Right, off you go. Go, off, go on with the rest of your career and don't mention to anyone else that the world's flat. Mm -hmm. That's an insane um, scenario. If you actually think that something like that happens in the real world, that's madness. And it would have to happen because you couldn't be a pilot and not know this. Because either planes would be flying at completely different speeds that, than we're told they fly at, they or they're flying in completely different directions, or completely different distances. Something would have to give, something would have to be radically different that would be noticed. So, we have to really start questioning, not so much... Not, not really thinking about the evidence as much, because the evidence is there that the earth is a sphere. It's just a question of whether you, your brain's allowing you to see that or not. When I was trying to think of something that I could compare this phenomenon to, the only thing I could really think of would be, if you imagined that you knew an adult, a grown person who still believed in Santa Claus, I mean, what would you say to them? I mean, at first you might just think they were joking. You know, no way, you don't believe in Santa Claus. And they keep saying, no, no, I, I, honestly, I do, I do, I believe in Santa Claus. I mean, you might initially start indulging them with a bit of discussing evidence. You say, well, how is that possible? How could one person deliver all the toys to all the children in the world in one night? How? But then you would find that they would have psychological defences set up. Anything you ask them, they would, they would think of some kind of superficially plausible explanation. And no matter what you said, they would come up with some sort of explanation. Um, I, ca I call this process of defending beliefs logical gymnastics, because that's what you have to do. Once you've got a fixed belief in your head, and it's completely jarring with reality, then you're constantly in a process of of having to do these logical gymnastics to defend this belief. And I find that that's what you find with flat earth proponents. They're just constantly doing these logical gymnastics, but it's everything they say is completely inconsistent, and they're totally inconsistent with each other. So this has to be viewed also as a psychological phenomenon. The question is to be asked. You know, just as eventually... If you knew someone who believed in Santa Claus, I think eventually you would just draw a line and say, look, no, we're not discussing this anymore. We're not discussing the pros and cons of the Santa Claus theory. We have to discuss you. You're the thing that has to be talked about. Why do you believe this? Why are you choosing to believe something that is absurd? And that's really the approach, I think, that has to be taken with the, the people who are saying this. It's not really okay, let's talk about the evidence. It's more like, why are you saying this? Why do you believe this? What's the psychology? What are the, emo what are the motivations going on in someone's head to believe something that is completely at odds with reality? And there's a few things that I've noticed discussing this with flat earth proponents over the last... Well... Last summer, I, I encountered it and spent some time talking to people about it. And after a couple of months, thought, oh, these people are nuts. And just kind of forgot about it and thought it would just fade away. And then earlier this year, I kind of looked into it a little bit more again and found out that it was, instead of fading away, it was starting to grow. And now it's mushroomed. And they're online like clones. Every one of them spouts the same wrong information. They all say the same stupid things over and over again. Whether it's water always finds a level or the earth spinning at a thousand miles per hour and it's spinning through space at 67,000 miles per hour. As if these are facts that really... I don't know what, what they think these facts prove or that these statements prove. 
Um, anyway, this isn't about evidence. I'm not really. This isn't a video about discussing evidence. This is a video about discussing motivations. Because if there's a few traits I've discovered with flat earthers that a lot of them have, one is that a lot of them are very narcissistic. They really have this fantasy that there is, the whole world is conspiring in some kind of, well, no other word for it, conspiracy. And that they're some sort of intrepid investigator going up against it, uncovering it and so they kind of cast themselves in the role of some of being some really special person. They also must be, they're also extremely paranoid. Because anyone who, who challenges their belief gets accused of being a shell. I've been accused of it. Other people that I, that I know who are arguing against them will get accused of it. We get told that we're working for a conspiracy and we're getting paid for this. I mean, I'm serious. If you think that someone online is being paid to argue against you, you really need to start looking at yourself. Because this is just, this is, it's madness what's going on. I can't really think of any other word for it. It's madness. So my question really is, why are they saying it? What are they getting out of it? I mean, is it, is it that their lives are so awful that they have to have this fantasy that that somehow gives them a psychological release? It somehow, if they can believe something as radical as this, that that everything that they're I mean, they always say this thing: everything is a lie. Everything is a lie. Now, I would say we are told that there are a lot of lies told in this world. There are a lot of abuses of power. There's a lot of terrible things happen. People start wars for the wrong reasons. People, well, as if there are the right reasons, but all kinds of things go on in this world. Terrible things. Is it some kind of release from that. I don't understand. I don't know. What is it that they're getting out of this? But definitely one thing is that they do see themselves as incredibly important. And maybe that's the psychological motivation. It's a kind of... I've, just, I've compared it to being a kind of opposite of Stockholm Syndrome. Stockholm Syndrome is where people are in a situation where they're powerless and they start to sort of fantasise that they're in league with the people who have power over them. It happens to people when they're being kidnapped. Well, conspiracy theories, it's kind of like the opposite of that. They, you, you feel people in a situation where they maybe feel powerless. So they start to claim that everything that people in authority tell them is not true. Now, like you said, there's a lot of things people say that aren't true that we're told. But basic facts about the world, like the fact the world is a sphere, isn't one of them. So I just wanted to kind of make a video where I just shared my thoughts on this about, you know, and ask people not really to discuss evidence in this video, but just to share their thoughts about what they think the motivations are for this and why they think people are doing this. Because, as I said, it's past discussing evidence. It's like the Santa Claus believers. At some point, you just have to say, look, enough is enough. We have to talk about why you believe this. Not in terms of evidence, but in terms of you. What are, you, what are your motivations for believing this? 